The Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> the Great Gildersleeve is brought to you, transcribed by the Kraft Foods Company. Kraft, makers of the one and only Miracle Whip salad dressing. We say one and only because there just isn't any other salad dressing like Miracle Whip. Miracle Whip is different, and it tastes different. Miracle Whip tastes so good, it's become the most popular salad dressing ever created. More Miracle Whip is sold than the next 20 leading brands of salad dressing combined. Try it. Make your salads better tasting with the one and only Miracle Whip. the great Gildersleeve took his little nephew, Leroy, down to Hogan Brothers' department store to buy him a suit. And while he was there, he bought one for himself, too. Did he have it wrapped? Not the water commissioner. He's wearing it home. And it's quite a suit. You bet. Latest thing, dill pickle green. Hey, uh, could we walk on the other side of the street? Do what for, my boy? There's not so many people over there. With you in that suit, walking in this crowd is dangerous for a little kid. They get to looking at you and walk right over me. <laughs> now, Leroy, let's not be jealous. You have a fine suit, too. Holy cow, Unc, that color. Dill pickle green. You could wear that to a masquerade party. Masquerade? Sure. Put on a mustard shirt and you can go as a hamburger. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do, Leroy. You're just a little boy and you don't know anything about fashion. This color is so new, it hasn't even been in the magazines yet. Hey, Uncle, how about getting some popcorn and going to a movie? No, no, we have to get home, my boy. Bertie will be waiting dinner for us. By George, this is a good-looking suit. Nice lines. Snappy. Oop, pardon me, madam. <laughs> Why don't you look where you're walking, Aunt? Well, I just glanced in the shop window. Yep, collar fits nice, too. Just like Esquire. Why do they make these store windows so short? Can't get a good look at yourself before you hit the doorway. Excuse me. Aunt. Uh, all right, Leroy, I'm looking for something. You're right here, in fact, in this big, shiny window. Yeah, this is more like it. You can't tell anything in those triple mirrors where they sell the suits. You see too many people. Yeah, Aunt, why do you want to look into a paint store? Let's go home. Well, I may want to buy some white lead. Yes, sir, Gildersleeve, Steve, you look pretty good. And this coat with the belt in the back makes those shoulders look fine. And the pants are nice, too. Um, I read a story once about a guy named Narcissus. Huh? Hmm? All he did was sit and look at his reflection in the water. Oh? You know what happened? What? He fell in the lake. <laughs> well, all right, Leroy, we'll go home. My name is Narcissus, and I'm not going to fall in any lake. Hey, you got a tag on the back of your coat. Why, well, this is your name. Uh, the clerk probably left it there. What does it say? That died. Boiled and free shrunk. <laughs> oh, Bertie, we're home. Yeah, come get a load of our new outfit. Well, Leroy, don't you look nice? Yeah. And who's this man with you? This ain't Mr. Gill, please. Yep. <laughs> Didn't recognize me, did you, Bertie? Say, would you look at that. Mr. Gill, please, you got a new suit, too. Sure, the latest thing, Bertie. This is what they're wearing in New York now. Has pleats in the pants. I got cuffs on mine. How do you like this coat, Bertie? Ain't that fancy? You know something, Mr. Gilsey? The way that coat's made, your shoulders is catching up with your waistline. <laughs> no, Bertie. Look at the shoulders on my coat. Of course, I only bought this suit because I needed it. A man has to have more than one suit, especially when he's a water commissioner. Oh, for corn's sake. How do you like the color, Bertie? Oh, that's nice. What color is it? Catfish green. 
Dill Pickle Green. All the young men are wearing it this year. Well, it sure makes you look young, Mr. Gillsleeve. Well, I am young, Bertie. Yes, sir. In that outfit, you could go to the college football game and sit in the root and student section. <laughs> sure I could. Well, you could go to them games and help with the root and tootin' section. Yeah, I know, Bertie. You fit right into that root and tootin' section. Yeah, all right, Bertie. Miss Gilsey, you know what you could do in that outfit? Yes, Bertie. That's right, you could go root and tootin' up! <laughs> Well, Bertie's right, Leroy. I'm no moss bat. Plenty of fire in me yet. I'm full of beans. Anybody home? Oh, well, Marjorie, hello, my dear. <gasps> Leroy, you look so nice. Yeah. Marjorie, notice anything about me? Well, here we go again. Oh, that's a lovely view, Donkey. That's fish green. Dill pickle. <laughs> It gives you a wonderful figure, Uncle Morris, like a dill pickle. It... <laughs> Leroy. Well, it isn't all the suit, my dear. Most of this figure is mine. Round the waist, it's all his. <laughs> <laughs> Little jokester. The trouble is, Marjorie, the clothes I've been wearing before made me look older than I am. Now, I'm not old. Well, of course you're not. I'm right in my prime. Man doesn't come into his full strength until he passes 40. Well, that's right, Anki. Yes, sir. Of course, my waistline's a little large, but I'm not fat. I'm just heavy. Oh, you're wonderful, Uncle Morton. We love you. Well, thank you, my dear. Don't we love him, Leroy? I think I'll go upstairs. <laughs> Great. Wash your little face for dinner. I'm going out and see Bertie. Great. I think I'll slip in and take a peek in the hall mirror. Couldn't see much in that pink store window. Well, that's better. I'm not being like that fellow Narcissus who kept looking at himself in the water. I've got something to look at. Why, George Gildersleeve, why don't you admit it? You're a powerhouse. Look at those shoulders. And those arms. Really a sleeveful. Yes, sir, the head of the household. The white stallion leading the white horses. The bull moose leading the mooses. Oop, there's Bronco. I'd forgotten about him. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, hello, Bronco. Marjorie, here's your little husband. Oh, hello, dear. Hi, honey. The twins are over at your mother's and we're having dinner with Uncle tonight. <laughs> My little family. Oh, what do you have in the package? Hmm? Oh, well, this. All oh, these are some scales. Scales? Yeah, I'm going to put them in our bedroom so I can watch my weight. I weighed myself today, Mr. Gildersleeve, and I've gained three pounds. Well, good. You're growing. Oh, that's what worries me. I got quite a shock yesterday. Oh? Yeah, when I dressed in the morning, I forgot to put on my belt. And I didn't notice it until noon. What was holding your trousers up? That's what worries me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bronco, you never look better. Certainly, you're just a boy. You could use a little weight. If you're going to lead the wild horses, I mean, <laughs> be the head of a family like me, you've got to build yourself up like me. Oh, no, Mr. Gildersleeve. No, just because I'm the father of twins, I'm not going to let myself go. No, just a minute. Oh, he's being silly, isn't he, Yankee? Look at those muscles in his arms. Show him your arms, Bronco. Oh, Marge. Yeah, show us your muscle, Bronco. No, Leroy, Bronco doesn't want to show his muscles. Wait till he grows up. That buffalo's going to get bigger? <laughs> Leroy, stop embarrassing your brother-in-law. He's just a boy, Buffalo. Uh, I mean, a boy. Bronco, remember how you used to chin yourself in the doorway? Go ahead. Show us how you chin yourself. <laughs> no. Leave him alone. If he doesn't want to chin himself, he doesn't have to. Oh, I don't even know if I can do it now. But I'll try. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. Look at the beast. One, two, three, four. Brother, look at him go. Isn't he wonderful, Hunky? Oh, yes, yes. Show off. Oh, I can only do 12. Uh, pretty bad. Let's see you do it, Unc. Me? Well... Dinner's ready, Mr. Oh, good. Dinner's ready. Let's go to the table, everybody. Time to eat. Come on, Unc. Let's see you chin yourself just once. Oh, Leroy, Unc, can't do that. Oh, that's not for a fat man. <laughs> I mean, 
not that you're fat. I mean for a large man. Oh, is that so? I'm not fat. I'm just well built. Go ahead, Aunt. All right. Stand aside. Watch this. Your feet are still on the floor, Aunt. <laughs> Don't rush me. Why you got one foot up? Hey, look out, Mr. Gildersleeve. You're breaking the door frame. Oh, could have done it, though. That wood's pretty weak. Why don't we try it on the railroad bridge? <laughs> What's so funny, Marjorie? You monkey swinging in that doorway. Reminds me of the day we went to the zoo. Wolfer, come to the table. Bronco, you sit on the left. Marjorie over here. Leroy over there. This is where we always sit. Well... Sit there. Hey, Bronco, remember that trick you used to do when you were living here? Crawling around the back of a chair without touching the floor? Leroy, Marjorie married a husband, not a performing seal. Oh, I remember that trick. Bronco was the only boy at school who could do it. Bertie, bring the dinner. It's coming, excuse me. Show us how you did that one, Bronco. Oh, no, I couldn't do it. Sure you can. Leroy, he said he couldn't. Don't you believe him? Oh, go on, Bronco, you can do it. Well, all right. Oh, my goodness. Now, this is uh, pretty difficult. You've got to go around the back of the chair without touching the floor. Watch it, Bronco. He's doing it. He's doing it. Oh, keep your feet up, Bronco. Yeah. Stand back. There. Oh, you did it. Hooray right, for Bronco. Oh, you ah, Bronco. It was nothing. <laughs> Let's see you do it, Uncle. <laughs> no, just a minute. Oh, Leroy, don't be silly. Uncle Mort couldn't begin to do that. Oh, I couldn't. I wouldn't try it if I were you, Mr. Gildersleeve. You keep out of this. I'm the bull moose. I mean, the head of the household. I can do anything that kid can. And I can do it better, too. Ah! Send back, Bertie. <laughs> Look out, Aunt. The chair's tipping. You <laughs> <laughs> be careful. Oh. <laughs> Are you all right? <laughs> yeah. I'm all right. <laughs> you should have seen yourself, Aunt. Like a balloon coming down. <laughs> oh, Mr. Kelsey, you're a real comedian. <laughs> Don't worry about the chair, Mr. Gildersleeve. I can glue it back together. <laughs> The heck with the chair. Excuse me, children. What about dinner, Auntie? Aren't you going to eat? I'm not hungry. I'm going to my room. Fall mirror. And there you are, Gildersleeve. Just an old tub. Moon going down. Narcissus, you fell in the lake. <laughs> Great Gildersleeve will be back in just a minute. Ever entertain buffet style? It's fun, isn't it? Fun for the guests and fun for you, too. Part of the fun is setting a beautiful table, wouldn't you say? And finding attractive new settings for your food. Let's say, for example, you're serving coleslaw for the salad part of your meal. You might pile your coleslaw in orange shells from which you've removed all the insides. Arrange them on a tray with a generous amount of parsley garnish and just watch the surprise faces. And if you've made that coleslaw extra good with Miracle Whip salad dressing, you'll see happy faces, too, as your guests taste that delicious salad. Miracle Whip gives coleslaw such marvelous flavor, a flavor that's lively, teasing, just sharp enough. And it's a flavor you won't find in any other salad dressing because Miracle Whip is unique. It's made from a secret craft recipe that combines the best qualities of zesty, old-fashioned boiled dressing and fine, rich mayonnaise. And Miracle Whip has a perfect texture, creamy thick and smooth as satin, because it's blended carefully with special craft beaters. No wonder millions prefer it. Smooth and delicious, Miracle Whip has become the most popular salad dressing ever created and actually outsells the next 20 leading brands of salad dressing combined. 
Make all your salads taste better with America's favorite salad dressing, Miracle Whip. Now, let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. In the story of Snow White, the Wicked Queen had a mirror that told her anything she wanted to know. Up in his bedroom this morning, the water commissioner has a mirror that's telling him a few things. Gildersleeve, you may as well face it. You look like a hippopotamus. A water-soaked hippopotamus. No wonder the family laughed when you couldn't chin yourself even once. And when you fell off the chair trying that trick. And that Bronco thinks he's smart. Well, I'm smart, too. And I'm not so fat, either. When I pull my chest up a little... Yeah, this mirror must be warped. I wonder what the family will say when I get on to breakfast. Yeah, they probably won't say anything. Probably forgotten the whole thing. Sure. Yeah, I'll just act as if nothing had happened. And by George, I may bruise easily, but I heal fast. Coming, Bertie! <laughs> Good morning, Bertie. Good morning, Auntie. We came over to see if you're all right. Yeah, I'm all right. Good morning, Mr. Gildersleeve. Good morning, Bronco. Hi, Aunt. Good morning, Leroy. <laughs> Gildersleeve, you're in. It's all forgotten. How's the acrobat this morning? Oop. <laughs> <laughs> acrobat? What do you mean? Now, Leroy, you hush. Uh, sit down, Auntie. I put a pillow on your chair for you, Aunt. I don't need it. Your chair in the dining room is going to be all right, Mr. Gildersleeve. I'm gluing the seat back on. Well, that's fine, Bronco. Thank you, bacon and eggs, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, thank you, Bertie. You ought to have a good appetite this morning, missing your dinner last night. Oh, yes. Yeah, we're all sorry about last night, Mr. Gildersleeve. It was my fault. Oh, no, no, it wasn't, Bronco. We'll just forget the whole thing. Let bygones be bygones. Oh, it's mighty nice of you, Mr. Gildersleeve. You're a big man. Thank you, Bronco. What a fine boy. We all want to apologize, Uncle Mort. We didn't mean to... I mean, when you fell off the... If you could have... Oh, Marge, cut it out. <laughs> he couldn't help it. <laughs> How are you going to see yourself? I like a balloon. <laughs> Excuse me. Miss Gilsey, ain't you going to eat your bacon and eggs? No, thanks, Bertie. Where are you going? If I can squeeze through the front door, I'm going to waddle downtown. <laughs> What's that old saying? Everybody loves a fat man. Well, they don't love me. And I'm not so big. Uh, quit quitting yourself, Gildersleeve. You are, too. Well, confound it. If I can put on weight, I can take it off. Lots of people do. Those ads in the paper. Mrs. Hogtight Clune of Elbow, Indiana, loses 20 pounds in eight days. Yeah, I'll show the family. I'll trim down. I may be a barge today, but tomorrow I'll be a speedboat. I'll bet Peavy can help me. Hello, Peavy. Yeah, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. What can I do for you this morning? I want to get some reducing medicine, Peavy, for a friend of mine. Oh? Yeah, fine fellow, but he's a little chubby. Well, I have a number of popular brands. Does your friend have any preference? No, he doesn't know much about these things. Of course, neither do I. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. <laughs> now, here's a very popular reducing product, Dr. Beagle's Golden Formula. It hounds the pound to it. Well, I don't think my friend would care for Dr. Beagle. Now, now, here's a preparation quite a number of people are buying. Aunt Marion's waistline reducer. It's very effective. They tell of one fellow who used too much and his waistline disappeared entirely. <laughs> oh, my goodness. He had quite time keeping his trousers up. He finally used his wristwatch for a belt. <laughs> Gee, is that story true? <laughs> no, but it sells a lot of merchandise. 
Well, uh, let's get back to my friend. All right, Mr. Gildersleeve. How many pounds do you want to lose? Oh, about 50 or 50. Peavy. I didn't say it was for me. No, you didn't. Well, all right. It is for me. But it's not that I'm overweight for my size, Peavy. I just thought I'd trim down a little. Well, probably the cheapest way is to stop eating. It's very effective. I know, Peavy. Now, you look at the camel. When he goes a long while without eating, his humps disappear. Peavy, I'm not a camel. I'm only trying to be a service. Have you tried Judge Hooker's rowing machine? Say, I'd forgotten about that. Rowing's awfully hard. But I'm desperate. Well, you might give the judge a call. No, no, don't want to risk the call. The way I feel today, I could get stuck in that phone booth. I'll go right over to the judge's house and get started in that rowing machine. Yeah, good luck. Don't fall overboard. See you later, Peavy. You're perfectly welcome to my, use my rowing machine, Gilday. Here in my bedroom. Well, let's get started, Judge. My position as the head of the family is at stake. I'm going to lose some weight if I have to row this thing clear to Greenland. Nothing like a rowing machine, Gilder. That's how I keep my perfect 36. <laughs> all right, Horace. Every morning, a brisk turn at the oars, and then I have a pick-me-up. Half a rye bun and a beaker of Kalak water. Judge, please. I haven't eaten anything since last night. Oh, would you like a snack, Gilder? No, thanks. Maybe those camels have an idea. What was that, Gilder? It's nothing, Judge. Oh, brother, I'm weak. Help me into the boat. Sure. Uh, uh, uh. Now you're at the oars. I call my bedroom Hooker Lake. Yes, yes. 250 strokes on the oars will get you across. That's from Washstand Bay to Pillowslip Point. Hey. <laughs> All right, Judge. Let me get started. Left oar. What's the difference? I'm rowing. But you can't get across the lake unless you go straight. Oh, my goodness. Left oar. Judge, are you in the boat with me? Certainly. It's a long trip. I'm going along to keep you company. Oh, brother. Going across Hooker Lake on a rowing machine with an old goat. Water commissioner, this time you've struck bottom. Forty-six, two hundred and forty-seven, two hundred and forty-eight. Left oar. Two hundred and left oar. We're almost there, Gilder. Two hundred and fifty. Oh. We made it. You rode across Hooker Lake. How do I look, Judge? Have I lost any weight? Oh, I'm sure you have, Gilder. You're the picture of health. Well... Thanks for the use of the rowing machine, Judge. But, Gildy, you're across the lake. Aren't you going to row back? No, you can row it, Judge. The way I feel, I'll just catch the first breeze and fly back. That you, Miss Gilsey? Yeah, I'm home, Bertie. Mr. Gilsey, you look awful thin. I do? You feel all right? No, I feel fine, Bertie. Never felt better, in fact. Where are the children? Miss Marjorie and Mr. Bronco are over at their house, and Leroy's out in the yard. You're just in time for lunch. Lunch? Uh, No, I'm not going to eat, Bertie. I'm reducing. You what? Bertie, do you know that when a camel goes without food, his humps disappear? That's what I'm doing. Disappear? No. I'm losing weight. But you got to eat. Everybody's got to eat. Well, not me, Bertie. Uh, call Leroy. I'll sit down at the table with him. But I'm not eating. Leroy! Lunch! I'll sit down here at the table where he can see me when he comes in. Hmm, Bertie noticed I was thinner. Leroy's bound to see it. <laughs> right, George, get asleep. When you set your mind to something, you do it. Hello, Auntie. Oh, hello, my dear. Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Having lunch, are you? Well, not exactly, Bronco. Hi, Auntie. Hello, Leroy. Boy, am I hungry. Where's the food? Uh, uh, you children notice anything about me? You got a spot on your necktie. It's something bigger. Yeah, I mean, 
Don't you notice something? Well, I don't see anything, Anki. Well, you look fine to me, Mr. Gildersleeve. Children, can't you see? I've lost weight. I'm thinner. I haven't eaten anything. I've been exercising. Uncle Mort, you aren't doing this because... because we laughed at you. Well... Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, not because of us. Well... Gee, Uncle, we didn't mean it. You didn't? Oh, Uncle, we wouldn't have you change for anything. We love you just as you are. Sure. Don't ever change, Mr. Gildersleeve. Children, this touches me very deeply. I should have known that you would... Excuse me. I... I... What's the matter, Uncle? I can't get up. I was going out in the kitchen for a drink of water, but now I can't move. It's my own fault. Not eating since last night. Rowing across Hooker Lake. My strength is gone. I can't get up. Mr. Gildersleeve, I know why you can't get up. Huh? I glued the seat of your chair this morning, and it wasn't dry yet. <laughs> oh! Stuck to the chair. My new suit. Oh, Lord. I'm sorry I can't help it. <laughs> what a character. <laughs> Oh, the heck with it. Go ahead and laugh. Bertie, bring on the lunch. <laughs> the great Gildersleeve will be with us again in just 30 seconds. Making a fresh fruit salad, to be sure your fruit is at its flavorful best, Take it out of the refrigerator a little before you want to use it so that it's cold, but not too cold. Another way to make sure that salad will be delicious is to use Miracle Whip salad dressing. Miracle Whip has a simply wonderful flavor, a special, lively, teasing, peppy flavor that no other salad dressing has. Make all your salads extra good with the salad dressing millions prefer, the one and only Miracle Whip. <laughs> Fine lunch, Bertie. Thank you, Mr. Gilfrey. Yeah, bye, George. A man's a fool to worry about being a little chubby. Who cares? After all, it gives him a good, solid appearance. Makes him look important. Yeah, and successful. You looking in the mirror again? Who, me? Yeah, I wasn't looking in the hall mirror, Leroy. Just passing by and happened to glance at myself. Yeah. So what if I am on the chunky side? I'm the water commissioner. Takes a big man for a big job. You can't haul a freight train with a bicycle. You got to have a locomotive. Yeah. Are you busy, Mr. Gildersleeve? No, no, Bronco. What is it? Oh, I got trouble with the car out in front. I need some real beef. Well, there, you see. When there's a big job to be done, the tune changes. <laughs> yeah, all right, Bronco. Where do you need the real muscle? Oh, I don't need muscle. I got my bumper locked with another car. Would you stand on it while I pull them apart? <laughs> That does it. Good night, folks. The Great Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White and is transcribed. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Earl Ross, Dick Crenna, and Dick Legrand. Musical compositions by Jack Meekin. This is John Heaston saying good night for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Calling all sandwich makers, be on the lookout for Miracle Sandwich Spread when you are shopping. Take a jar home and discover what a delicious, different flavor this wonderful spread gives your sandwiches. Miracle Sandwich Spread is made by Kraft from America's favorite salad dressing, Miracle Whip, and spicy relishes. Use it along with the meat or cheese sandwich filling you like best. Or for the quickest, easiest, thriftiest sandwich you could want, use it alone between slices of bread. Get it tomorrow. Miracle Sandwich Spread.
friends, forest fires create a shameful waste which weakens America. So memorize and observe these four simple rules of forest fire prevention as advocated by Smokey Bear. One, crush out cigarette, cigar, and pipe ashes. Two, break matches in two after using. Three, drown all campfires, then stir and drown again. Four, find out the law before using fire. Smokey says, remember, only you can prevent forest fires. Tonight, enjoy the best of Groucho on NBC. NBC.